Uh, welcome uh, friends once again to the module uh, of NPTEL on strategic trade and protectionism. Uh, we are uh, now particularly explaining uh, trade protectionism uh, chapters, especially identifying uh, the various concepts or the conceptualization of protectionism, why it is required, why it is favor and against and what kind of recent cases are there, how these have been restricted. Uh, so, this is week number 6 and lecture number 27, myself Dr. Pratap Mohanty, faculty member in the Department of Humanities and Social Science, IIT Roorkee. So, let us explain and understand uh, you know why, uh, uh, why there is a trade, why there is a protectionism we have already clarified, is not it? Now, question arises, what are the different types of uh, protectionism which actually been restricted over time and which should be restricted actually in different forum. So, let us explore the types. And while understanding the types of protectionism, we also should all understand what kind of implications of those types uh, on, on the economy of that particular country or, the, or, or on others. So, types of protections are very, very essential from various perspectives. Now, let us have a framework and you know, what exactly we mean by protectionism and how it is getting covered. Now, the first aspect is tariff. In the protectionism, in the types, we are supposed to understand tariff in detail. The second aspect is non-tariff. Then uh, within tariff, here we are presenting the details of tariff. So, within tariff uh, is part of uh, tariff as we know, it is part of our trade policy instrument and uh, tariff broadly divided into three types, I will also explain add value realm, specific and compound, broadly there are of three types. Now, uh, in a partial equilibrium set off, uh, as I told you through, 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 in a, through the narrower uh, no, perspective of uh, explaining or understanding trade uh, as a protection through tariff, uh, it helps or breaches in some kind of you know, uh, uh, dimensions like you know, for consumers there is a surplus through tariff, especially in a small country context. Whereas, for producers it is, it is, it is, it is you know for consumers it is not surplus, it is deficit, for, con, uh, for producers it is a surplus. Why is it so? We will explain with the help of diagram and examples. For government revenue it is plus, for overall welfare it is negative. So, these must have been understood through, through detailed framework. Now, uh, is does it have any income redistribution channels? Yes, it has. Uh, certain channels of redistribution from consumers to producers, uh, especially from abundant factor to scarce factor. Now, these uh, tariffs can also be uh, helped in, in, in you know uh, explaining small country impact as well as large country nation. So, largely we started the discussion of whether if a small country imposed tariff, then it does not impact uh, the terms of trade of or the, the rest of the world. So, therefore, usually small country does not uh, differ or does not change the terms of trade and, and the net welfare uh, changes to the rest of the world is, is unaffected. So, the terms of trade unaffected as I t already explained earlier, is not it? Uh, whereas, overall welfare for the small country is negative, we will explain it actually volume of trade is going to be negative. So, part of the distribution regarding, I mean let, let us compare with the large country nation. Volume of trade is negative, terms of trade is going to be positive if it is, if it is the large country impose you know tariff. So, overall welfare may increase, decrease depending upon the volume of trade, the elasticity of trade and, 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 and depending upon the context. Now, so far as uh, income distribution is concerned, we have uh, talked about uh, SS theorem, stolper samuelson theorem, scarce factor is better off even though nation as a whole overs up, but this, there will be redistribution of income. Similarly, the concept of optimal tariff can be identified theoretically possible to improve welfare by imposing optimal tariff. So, these are the issues going to be discussed and uh, you know uh, explained in our subsequent lectures. So, now we are here to explain different uh, types of protection. Uh, one by one, uh, we have divided in the I mean discussed in the last class and divided uh, largely to these are non tariff barriers and these are this is tariff barriers. Okay. Now, broadly quotas, subsidies, uh, you know voluntary VR, uh, export controls, SPS and TBTs, SPS stands for sanitary and phytosanitary measures, TBT stands for technical barriers to trade. 
so we will discuss the meaning of each of this now on. Now, as an introduction to the understanding of tariff, uh, we let us compare, uh, I mean let us try to understand what do you mean by tariff. Tariff is the restrictions on trades, tariff is the rest, I mean restriction on the you know uh, trade, tax basically is a restriction or tariff or a tax or the duty levied on the imported commodities. So, usually tariff is referred to as tax on, on export and import, but uh, you know, uh, but largely no country imposed tax on exports because you know while we impose ta 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 tax on exports uh, that will demotivate the exporters to sell their products because the products will be internationally less competitive due to the higher prices. So, so the, the concerned country while imposing tariff, so usually the ta 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 ta, you know, impose tariff on, on, on imports not on exports. So, therefore, largely it is said the tax levied or the duty levied on imported commodities are called tariff. This is, this is also called import tariff. So, though a tariff is imposed on both, but usually practice is on import because you know if you are imposing tariff on imports, this, this will restrict the imports to the country and this helps in improving balance of payment situation, this helps in you know domestic protection, this helps in many other you know channels. So, the most common form, uh, uh, form of restrictions or the protectionism is called tariff. Export tariff is a tax expo on the exported commodities prohibited by US constitution, but occasionally practiced in developing countries to generate government revenue. Okay? So, developing countries also practice this. Now, there are uh, broadly there are different categories ad valorem, you know, uh, then, then unit or specific tariff and third one is called compound tariff. Ad valorem is on the percentage you know uh, charge on the value of the traded uh, commodities. Then it says it's basically fixed com percentage. Now specific tariff is, is basically fixed amount not the percentage uh, on the traded volume. Whereas compound tariff is simply a mix of the, these two you know there are two rates uh, at the base rate with fixed and beyond that if uh, there is more trade then ad valorem is imposed. So, now tariff, uh, let us have a testing on it or let us understand it. Tariff is a tax on, now you can fill up tax on not exports, uh, imports. Okay. So, the customs officials usually you know uh, check all the mo movement or entry to the country. Now, the, therefore, here is this picture of customs officer. Uh, whether they have paid tariff of 50 dollar or not that amounts to 100 dollar. So, that is that is that is uh, clarified from, from the picture. Now, it is as I just said tariff is a tax on imported goods on an which basis ad valorem basis or specific basis or the fixed amount or the unit charge. So, <clears throat> this is if it on and generally on ad valorem at the present days basis or this is also called on, on a unit basis, if the unit increases the percentage tax increases. So, for unit basis. So, an extra tax on top of the regular tariff is called what? Extra tax on the top of that it is simply called surcharge, surcharge, surcharge uh, on the import. So, likewise surcharge in, 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 in taxes uh, we usually see in different context. Now, as an anecdote to the understanding of tariff, we will you know talk about small, small country and large country you know debates or discussion through diagrams later on, but let us try uh, very clearly uh, to understand the concepts of tariff and the effects of tariff uh, through this basic partial equilibrium setups. Why partial? We are only sticking to one commodity and one, one market or, or one market of one country. So, where demand and supply of that product is discussed. Now, due to tariff, the, there are restrictions to the uh, to the supply, so the supply gets restricted. So, whatever the supply you usually have, which result in uh, determining certain level of prices, now this has been restricted. So, uh, supply initially badly affected, so which has caused the supply to be uh, you know backward, shifted backward or uh, towards left. So, due to which, uh, uh, on the aggregate in the international level, uh, the prices actually increased. So, this has caused to the rise in the prices and fall in the quantity uh, demanded or supply in the world market. So, accordingly you can evaluate whether it is going to be good for the country 
or not good for the country. Now, uh, you know the price of imports, price of imports is a, is, a, is a quiz question, you can also you know think of from the perspective of your evaluation, from the you know context of evaluation, how you will be evaluated and what kind of objective question could be set. Some of the examples are given th uh, in the due course of the lecture. Now, uh, so uh, what is understood from this diagram, it says that uh, price of the commodity increases, we have already highlighted here. So, price of the of the of the, the imported goods actually increased. So, increase is the answer. Whereas, the quantity if I have said the amount of imports will fall or reduce, I have already emphasized this, this will be uh, notated with Q 1. So, there has been a fall. So, fall is highlighted here, you can uh, mark the difference. Now, so therefore, there is a decrease in the imports. Now, what happens to the you know when the country imposes tariff on the imported items or the imported uh, products, uh, it is quite sure that you know per unit uh, per unit price increased. So, who earns that income that income actually earned by the, uh, the country or the import officials uh, impose the taxes on those so the, the ministry is going to receive that money the 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 uh, the customs office will get that money per unit is by p, uh, the distance is p1 minus p0 uh, so times times uh, you know q1 minus q0 or q0 sorry q0 minus q1 so that is q0 minus q1 so this is the total revenue the customs office office is going to receive so highlighted with this in this diagram. So, tariff rate basically the rate of tariff uh, mentioned by the vertical distance, this is as we uh, understand in the microeconomic uh, approach where uh, the vertical distance measures the, uh, the, the rate of tariff, here also we have highlighted as T. So, T times, T times the quantity imported. So, now the quantity imported is of this Q1. Q1. So, total revenue actually total this is the fall, this is the fall in the tariff. So, this is only Q, simply this is only Q1 because Q1 is the uh, amount imported times the T, uh, the extent of T imposed on those. So, that much of amount will be actually paid to the customs office while getting the permission for import. So, similarly, uh, other forms of uh, restrictions are like, like import quota. Now, what do you mean by import quota? Import quota uh, are, are, are like you know quota you know we, we have mentioned the word is called uh, quota that means certain amount uh, of uh, amount of imports you are allowed as a, as a, as a trader or as a uh, arbitrager or even uh, as a importer or you are having an import house you will be allowed you have to take the permission to import. Uh, certain limit. There are many sectors which are uh, quite threat to the domestic production and which consistently raise number of uh, you know uh, restrictions to the domestic competition or, or the competition is, is uh, getting you know swayed to, to uh, you know uh, becoming less competitive. Our uh, infant industry is probably in threat therefore, certain quotas in certain sectors are imposed. So, when quota is imposed what are the problems? The quota basically restricts the extent of or the amount of product to be imported. You cannot just be allowed to import any amount even if you are paying taxes you, you I mean in case of tariff any amount you can import, but in case of quota you cannot go beyond that. So, basically in case of import quota uh, we have quantity restrictions whereas, in case of uh, tariff we have price restrictions. So, the, the uh, what is the limit of the quantity of goods that can be? Uh, can be produced in a country. So, customs official now is, is actually restricting the back you know the extent the box, box to be imported, the quantity to be imported. Now, the maximum that is why the maximum limit is allowed here and, 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 and the goods that can be imported to a country. So, is is actually on the answer behind uh, the, the, the you know the concept of quota. So, what are the economic effects? Also, we have already clarified for tariff. Now, what kind of economic effects of quota? In the next class, we will be explaining uh, in detail for uh, the comparison between whether comparison between tariff and quota, whether tariff is good for the country or quota should be good for country. So, those uh, things will be taken off uh, steadily uh, with 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 uh, you know detailed uh, examples. But let us understand the overview of all those instruments 
uh, being exercised by different co countries in different time period. Now, with the same uh, partial equilibrium set of let us uh, you know have a uh, uh, partial equilibrium diagram here, we, we have demand and supply. Now, what here is presented is import quota with, 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 with a caveat, part of the supply curve becomes you know restricted, restricted or vertical uh, uh, since a quota limit is imposed. Now, beyond this since it is vertical beyond this you are not allowed to import you are not allowed to import. So, the price of imported goods are now due to this uh, price as per the equilibrium price is here and uh, this price gets in increased. Why price gets in increased? Because now the exporter who used to export and uh, already have had uh, a contract with the importer country that you are supposed to you know, import as per the price, but now in between the government has changed its restrictions and now government uh, you know imposed with the fact that you cannot import that much. Now, since your import bargaining is, is becoming you know, squeezed uh, by the extent of import, uh, so the, now the bargaining power lies with the exporters since they are exporting to this country. So, they charge since they are say, exporting less they charge relatively higher prices. Now, this is also visible from the diagram. Okay. Now, who is earning that money? It is not earned by the domestic country that is one of the imposed important you know aspects of, of, of import quota. So, revenue not earned by the government. So, price, since price uh, of imported goods increase, so the, the, the amount of imports uh, though restricted. Now, uh, the import quota you cannot exceed Q1 that is clearly mentioned. So, amount of quantity falls is similar in uh, tariff lines. Uh, so, this has helped in the redu reduction of uh, you know, imports, but now question is by in the comparison of these two what is more effective we will actually uh, see it in detail in our next class, but now we are only concerned with clarifying uh, detailed restriction different type of types of uh, you know this title of the presentation today or the title of this lecture is specific and different uh, instrument of restrictions. So, quota is one of the form this is what we have already ex explained. Now, price increase and uh, you know fall in the quantity. So, effects of the total expenditure on imported good actually falls depending upon now again depending upon what. Uh, so, effect of the total expenditure on uh, total expenditure on goods is uncertain, total expenditure is uncertain where depending upon the elasticity of the demand imported, but even if we restrict if it is you know very elastic in nature then probably we can able to uh, judge whether it, uh, it has actually undermined the expenditure. So, increase here it is saying increase in the total expenditure, uh, this part this color this color is a decrease in total expenditure. So, the exact expenditure rise or fall depending upon the elasticity of uh, elasticity of demand. If the demand for import is inelastic, demand for import is inelastic. So, that means this, this diagram will be more you know steeper. Now, when this gets steeper it is uh, tilting towards this side, uh, this side little less changes. So, it might be like this, might be like this, like, like this. So, the vertical distance now will be higher. So, prices imposed will be much higher as compared to fall in the quantity. So, therefore, when it is inelastic uh, total expenditure by price will rise and and and, and uh, so the total total expenditure since why rise because the price uh, I mean the expenditure due to higher prices surpassing the fall in the quantity. Okay. So, this is one of the very very important objective question you must no, note it uh, very carefully. And uh, if you have understood the diagram, you may uh, go through again and uh, clarify it accordingly. Similarly, there are uh, certain other uh, you know channels of restrictions like VR voluntary export restraint programs. It is usually uh, you know uh, very you know uh, usually not imposed by member countries, uh, rarely observed, and specially observed by in, in in a context where uh, the UK restricted Indian ex textile products. And then usually these are uh, uh, the importing country sets a limit on the you know export volume for the exporting country. The importing country sets the maximum limit, maximum export volume for for the exporting country. So who 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 limits 
uh, the export it is the importing country. So, below, below this uh, limit the imported uh, goods will be taxed at a lower tariff, but once you exceed it the tariff line will be higher much higher. Now, it is you know progressively or, 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 or it is has a progressive rate. Uh, so, it is the voluntary uh, in the sense that the exporting country can you know freely decide the amount of exports given the tariff structure imposed by the importing country. So, generally it is at the request of the importing country to the exporting country to export or, or to restrict their export to other countries since there are certain tariff lines imposed. Uh, so, limits accordingly be set, but the freely decided by the exporting country at the certain tariff lines. Now, another instrument of uh, protection is called production subsidies. Now, this has been largely debated in different uh, world, uh, world trade organization forums or, or rounds of WTO like Doha and round, Marques round, uh, you know, Kun Kun round, then uh, you know. Uh, you know uh, DDA Doha you know development agenda then Uruguay round you know in various rounds this has been largely debated. So, subsidies basically this leads to subsidies to the local producers. Now, why it is important because subsidies are given to the producers so that they can be competitive in the international market, they can minimize the prices charged in the international market and that will attract huge you know foreign revenue to the domestic country and the domestic country can be claimed as as the monopoly uh, monopolist in the international market so the uh, large number of you know monopoly uh, behavior are exercised due to uh, the production subsidies indirectly facilitated by the domestic country so the subsidies are are are, are one sort of strategies to restrict trade so therefore these are also part of trade protectionism. Subsidies to the local producers lower the cost of production as I just said and uh, the price of the lo locally you know, produced goods. So, price can be uh, you know, reduced. Now, what really happens when subsidies are given we have reduced the you know, cost of production. So, cost of production will actually increase the supply and since it is actionally determined supply curve will be shifted towards right we can derive it actually uh, differently. Now, since the locally produced goods and foreign goods are you know substitutes for each other the demand for import will decrease. Uh, uh, why substitutes because you know the prices are now becoming very competitive. So, depending upon what kind of subsidies are given and on, on which channels uh, it, it is given. Therefore, the volume of imports will actually decrease because of the fact that uh, fact that we have given huge facilitation to the you know importers to produce on their own. So, the extent of imports will all be uh, restricted. So, they will better to be facilitated to produce rather than import it. So, that is one of the channels by which trade uh, restrictions. So, embargoes are also another uh, channels of restriction called a uh, stricter ban on goods. Uh, those are traded. Uh, so, ban are imposed upon the case I will talk about those examples in, 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 in with the help of many uh, tables the, and many you know examples we will uh, have the collection from different WTO rounds and different official data will be explained to you in the later lecture. So, now embargoes can be either a total embargo or or a partial embargo I mean you can restrict uh, 100 percent or partial you can restrict. So, total embargo strict uh, ban are there uh, on many products uh, you know similarly partially you can allow some, some to enter to the domestic boundary by the custom officials some of are not allowed. Some other channels are like foreign exchange controlled, foreign exchange control the government controls the foreign exchange or foreign currencies in the market. I think usually you might see in airports that the foreign uh, customs officials restrict the foreign currency to be entered into the country. So, <coughs> by restricting like you know uh, foreign exchange uh, is possible in certain uh, exchanges, certain you know transaction in other it is not allowed. Now, if I cite one example India's uh, currency how it is accepted in the international market. Uh, after since the Tarapur committee which was formed in the late 90s uh, which is allowed our uh, current account to be uh, current account to be you know fully convertible 
current account will you will try uh, get to know about this in balance of payment chapter in different papers. So, current account means which is consisting of uh, you know current account consisting of the transaction of goods and uh, you know services merchandise goods and services. Uh, so, uh, which is usually uh, a short term phenomenon uh, though long term transactions are also allowed, but uh, usually the volume of trade are very limited very you know, you know uh, limited in, uh, in number I mean amount whereas, uh, in the capital I mean account our currencies are not allowed uh, even Tarapur committee was con you know, constituted or that that did not actually uh, finally facilitate or allow our capital account to be convertible. Current account means all the transaction in the current account are fully convertible. So, which means all transaction under the purview of current account can be uh, you know transacted internationally that means our rupees can easily be accepted through the current account in the international transactions. Whereas, all kind of FDI channels or FIA channels are actually not allowed, rupees are not allowed, we have to any party which are interested to uh, have you know investment in our country they have to come up with foreign exchange other currencies or other uh, denominations like usually in a dollar and euro or pound there are many standard currencies defined. So, accordingly it is defined. So, the restrictions are made in order to protect the country uh, through these channels. Uh, so, therefore, government controls the exchange rate and the availability of foreign currencies, uh, foreign currencies is one of the channels which actually facilitates trade as well. So, more difficulty uh, and costly for importers to obtain foreign currencies and uh, as less foreign currencies available to pay for foreign goods, import will be automatically restricted. So, therefore, this is one of the major instruments of trade. Having uh, said all those directions of of of, of uh, our discussion. So, we are now poised with many questions many you know doubts in our mind. So, this is even not uh, completing our uh, patterns uh, or our instrument of uh, restrictions or, or different types of restriction other types are uh, non tariff uh, barriers which are very prominent in nature in the present days like uh, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, measures and technical barriers to trade measures. Uh, so, in the present days due to various forms of substitutability of products uh, in the trade basket. Uh, so, member countries have been trying their best to restrict the entry of other uh, products through the channels of sanitary or phytosanitary measures. So, they simply say that this is not fulfilling the standards uh, the sanitary standards or there are some technical uh, barriers also uh, since you know transaction requires certain you know uh, uh, you know documentation certain procedures if any procedures are actually felt some technicalities are felt. So, simply the member country raise or the importing country raise certain restriction that you know your your consignment is not allowed to enter to our domestic boundary. So, therefore, they restrict your product to be imported. So, those uh, TBT these are quite advanced uh, you know topics in our discussion we will have certain session complete dedication dedication uh, or dedicated sections for uh, non tariff barriers in the next next week. Now, after uh, explaining uh, various uh, you know basic instrument of uh, restrictions let us have some you know quiz answers quiz related questions and answers to test our beginning uh, you know fundamentals of restrictions. We will have uh, separate uh, you know uh, topics separate uh, I mean in the next uh, lecture let us start with uh, some channels. A tariff restricts the price of imports uh, only while a quota restricts quantity of imports only. Uh, a tariff restricts the price of imports only while quota restricts the quantity of imports only is it always true. So, explain this is uh, as clearly as possible. Now, this is uh, not 100 percent correct because as I say tariff restricts price of imports it is wrong tariff also restricts price of exports uh, usually it is imports. So, therefore, it is not only ok only is not the answer uh, then uh, a tariff tariff raises the prices and uh, whereas, uh, lowers the quantity of imports whereas, the quota reduces the supply and register price of imports we have already uh, explained 
In our second set, quiz number 2, question, quiz 2 question. Uh, so, uh, to restrict the amount of impose using a quota is more effective than imposing tariff. Why is it so? So far as restriction of import is concerned, uh, quota is more effective only because quota has a clear defined limit whereas ta tariff does not have. But quota has its own flip side, you can find out uh, very clearly the amount of reduction in imports by tariff depends on, depends on elasticity of demand for imports whereas the import quota directly restricts uh, the maximum amount of imports. So, this is a direct connection whereas uh, tariff does not have. So, let us test with the third one where if the government increases the amount of power unit tariff, the tariff revenue will increase. The explain whether this statement, this statement may not be true, it depends upon the elasticity of our import and export. So, that is demand and supply I really uh, not, uh, you know and their elasticities are important. The extent of restriction you do or it, it, it impose is very important to uh, calculate uh, the exact implications of tar tariff uh, and its re revenue earning by the government. So, these are the details we can find out through the vertical gaps. Now, though the, the, the di diagrams are uh, not emphasizing the exact elasticities. So, here we can easily say that due to higher tariff uh, no, uh, gains of uh, revenue is observed, but in reality uh, there, there might be some losses as well. So, losses can be identified uh, through various approaches. So, let us understand the effect of increasing the power unit tariff amount depends on the gains from tariff revenue due to, due to an increase in uh, the rate of tariff. Whereas, the loss in tariff revenue due to smaller quantity imported and similarly, if the demand for import is inelastic, the gain in tariff revenue will be greater since it is inelastic. Then the I mean you can examine through the diagram as I mentioned, if it is inelastic then it is greater otherwise it is I mean the revenue actually increases otherwise the reverse is true. So, this is the uh, example we have already started. Uh, in the last lecture, last uh, just additions to made uh, in this uh, argument, though we have made it earlier in our uh, you know first week of uh, the module, we just simply wanted to say that the China and US trade war has been uh, uh, I mean uh, on on debate over uh, 90 days, where they have lots of discussion on intellectual property, uh, you know 5G issues. Uh, made in China and related to their uh, threat to their manufacturing products, energy related issue, agriculture impose, auto tariff, market access for banks. You know, these are again uh, very important debates we may discuss uh, in the next class, you can go through the slide and uh, we will carry forward these two set of discussion while uh, trying to evaluate the exact implication of tariff. Okay, uh, and, and especially in the next week where we will be emphasizing the non-tariff measures or uh, these intellectual property issues probably will be discussed in detail. So, I hope you have raised many doubts uh, and we will be uh, steadily clarifying this concept. Here I should stop and will carry forward it. Thank you.